Now, what happens is years ago, and many, some of you may actually remember this, we used to have websites that were in frames, what we call framed. It was a frame thing. So uh, a picture would come up at the beginning, and that picture would be on every page on your website. And everything else would go underneath, and that was in a frame. And what happened was Google goes in, a robot goes in, and it sees that picture, and it goes away. It never gets to the content under that picture. Now today, most of us do not build websites in frames anymore. It, that was a Google no-no. It's like Flash. You don't do it. Uh, any good web developer will not do it. But a lot of good de web developers still don't understand SEO, search engine optimization, and they still build websites with poor architecture. That means the internal links to go from one page to the other aren't done in a flat structure, so it's too deep. So Google goes in and it doesn't really see the pages that have the information on it that it needs. And so if the architecture isn't right, your navigation, your code, your internal linking, even if the page loads slowly, if you have a picture that's not optimized correctly and, and um, uh, condensed correctly for speed, you get penalized because of all these things. So organic or natural optimization is very difficult if you don't have all of these things in place. Everything has to sync up, otherwise you don't get there. So a lot of people forget that, and that's why you don't make it. It's just a lot of different things that need to be put into place uh, when you're talking about your local search results and coming up naturally. Now, mobile search is a complete different search engine. So. If you go to Google search, you go to Google search, and then Google has Google mobile search, and you get a complete different set of results. Now, there are two types of browsers, basically, browser interaction on uh, mobile. You have what they call on deck, which is actually burnt into the computer. So for example, um, if you have uh, like a, a, a droid, you automatically have Chrome as your, your browser. If you have an, uh, an iPhone, I believe it goes automatically to Bing. I may be off with this, uh, but it is built in. Now, you can go to the Google browser in any one of the phones, but now you're going to a browser, so it's another step. So you have one that's baked into the actual hardware that's on deck, and one that you can go browser-based. So that's off deck. And then and anything can be found from the browser-based one, because you can go to the Google browser and get to a website. But if it's on deck, it goes faster because it's, it's in the machine itself. Um, so that's important to note. But it is definitely different than the uh, results that you get from your PC or your laptop or your computer, uh, your regular computer. Now, Here's what the search results look for for m mobile search. Basically, you have these results that need to be displayed. Okay, So you have your sponsored search, your Google Map results, or your place pages, and your Google News results. Now, here's what happens when you have it on a mobile phone. That's all you have. So notice how your sponsored search results are only two, and then you have your other results, and then you have your um, you have your map results, and then you have your, um, those would be your place pages results. The map and place pages on uh, mobile are the same. And then you have your natural results on the bottom. So you just have limited space. So it pulls results differently, and it displays results differently. Um, I just want to say, though, that mobile is so big that in the next couple of years, everything is going to be geared toward mobile and mobile advertising. It's huge. It's huge. And, and going to be even more huge. Now, some people I was talking to uh, were talking about the tools today. Now, all of these tools pretty much are free. Google changed up the whole relationship between um, you know, what you can get free and, and all these other businesses. So all the analytics businesses went out of business in sort of a day when Google started to say, here's all of our tools and it's free. They bought Urchin, which was a very powerful tool um, for, uh, for webmasters. And from that day on, maybe 10 or 12 
businesses went out of business that day because these were all just as good, if not better, and it was free. So you can't beat free. Now, Google Webmaster Tools, basically, a webmaster needs certain things to, to decide how effective are the programs that I'm running, okay? So basically, the webmaster tools, you can check out your sitemap, you can, uh, the crawler access reports that you get. In other words, is my site being crawled? If it is being crawled, when is it being crawled? And all that data is available to, to the webmaster if you know how to read it. You can become the webmaster to your own site if you understand what, what you're looking for. Um, site links. What are the links pointing to my site? They have all these uh, demand commands that you can actually put in and get all this information. Search query report. Who's searching? How are they searching? Um, very often for our e-commerce customers, we have a, uh, an internal site search. So that means that when you're on the website itself, people can search on the website. All of that data is, is actually recorded every day, every minute, so that the site administrator or the webmaster can go back and say, oh, 25 people today were looking for this product that I don't have. So maybe I should carry that product. Because all of that data is captured and put in a database called history of your internal site search. So data is really, really important on the internet because it can help you do better business if you understand what that data means, okay? Um, keyword analysis, which keywords are coming up all the time? What are people searching for? How did they get to my site? How, they came from these words, so you can actually check your, your keywords. Um, subscriber stats, if you have a subscriber, how many people subscribed, how many people did diagnostic tools, you know, is every page loading quickly, well, all of that stuff is available for free if you know what you're looking for. My recommendation is when you build your website, have your key performance indicators decided before so you know what stats you want to be looking at and you build that in so you're recording the right stats. In other words, you want to do proactively think about what stats will I need, and this does everything, but you can actually highlight that and actually put in some performance indicators before you even launch your site, and then you know what you're looking for as you start gathering those, that data. Now, the Google Analytics, just if you run Google Analytics on your site for the average person, you can get what we call intelligence reports. How do people actually navigate visitor statistics? Where do they go? How long do they stay on your site? How long do they stay on each page? What are they looking at in each page? You can actually, if you do video and you put video stats on, you can actually look at where do they actually look in the video? Do they play the first two seconds over and over and over, that dance video, you know, like as they keep looking at that one thing? Or do they look at the whole video? Where did they stop? You can actually look at all of that stuff, and that helps you. Um, traffic sources, visitor statistics, content, reports, where's the content coming from, goal tracking, and advanced segmentation. So there's all kinds of things that you can be looking for that help you to make your website better and more of a selling tool, more of a, uh, you know. Then you have the website optimizer. Now for small companies, what we recommend, basically the optimizer is basically testing landing pages. Whenever, what, what we always say is when you spend money on advertising, you want to know what your results are. Because if you're spending money and you don't follow it through, nobody spends money on advertising and doesn't look at the results. So we always spend money and then we want to see what are the results. Did I get a client? Did I get a click through? Did I get something? What did I get for my money? And basically, the optimizer gives you some tools that you can do some testing. So when, when you're a smaller company and you don't have millions and millions of views, you probably want to do something called A-B testing. So that means that you have a keyword and you lead that keyword to a certain page on your site. Not your home page, but the page on the site that matches the intent of the, um, of the searcher.